up everybody mike b with bombero bus and today i'm going to talk about six things that could be flooding your carburetors so i was at the barn enjoying a cup of coffee out on this uh, new deck we just put in there i don't know if that was in the last video but i should mention that wood was donated from uh, the shop worldwide that's a friend of mine got a shop he works on all sorts of things so you can check his channel out if you like thank you buddy for the wood but what i was thinking of is uh the victory that i recently had in solving the flooding carburetors that roxanne has had on both sides of her and it took me down a road so there are six things that i uh, encountered before uh it got fixed and we're going to talk about them now number one too much fuel pressure at your fuel pump these uh volkswagen air-cooled motors and the carburetors in particular are known to need a lower psi in my case they need two and a half three psi at the most so i had to do a fuel pump pressure test and i made a video on that you can check it out if you want but Number two, your carburetor float could be misadjusted. Uh, I'm gonna use this 34 pick three as an example. It's not what I run in my bus right now, but the fundamentals are the same. So it will help us out. If you look inside your carburetor, you're gonna have the bowl and inside there is a float. This float is pretty specific to the amount of travel that it should have going up and down. They vary per carburetor and I checked what it was for mine, and when I looked at it, it was within uh, the correct range. So float height adjustment, okay on mine. I had to move on to number three. Number three, your float needle and seat could be bad. So if you look under here, under the top piece, this is how it sits, you have a float needle that seats inside this valve. So we'll pop this one out. It also looks different than mine. And you can look to the rebuild video for that. But we're gonna look at this needle, which is inside the valve, and it travels up and down. Why does it travel up and down? Because as this float rises, it will push up on the needle and close this seat inside the valve so that no more fuel can travel in the fuel inlet valve. So what can happen is these can get stuck. You can see there, it's already kind of stuck in the upright position, took a minute to drop down, or they can get stuck down and they won't push up. So if this needle is bad inside your valve, uh, you'll need a rebuild or to replace this one but that can definitely uh, get messy and leave your seat wide open to where fuel can still come in through the inlet, overflow the bowl, and into your intake manifolds. Number four, your float washers could be the wrong size. If you remember me pulling this out of the top plate, You may have noticed these two washers right here. You won't always see two washers. The reason there's two on here are they are of varying thickness. And the reason is each one of these has a specific thickness of washers that it needs to find itself at the proper height. So if this was sitting here, you could see that if I was to take a washer away, that would raise the height of this needle and valve requiring the float to raise higher before it will close it. If I add a washer, it's gonna make this needle and valve sit lower meaning the float doesn't have to come up as high before it closes the needle into the seat. 
So these are pretty particular. You need to know this thickness. I found out what it was on mine, but this was the culprit for me. Uh, my washer here was smashed and in really bad shape when I replaced it with my rebuild kit. That was the solution for me. Everything else was fine. No more flooding of my carbs. Number five, and your carb can just be getting too hot. If you look at this application, uh, these dual carbs, this carburetor is sitting very low, okay? Most of the center mounts, they sit up high and they're farther away from the heat source, which is the cylinder heads. In this case, both of my carburetors are mounted to this intake manifold and they are very close to the source of heat. So what would happen uh, is after I turned off my engine, I would shoot this, intake manifold and my carburetor with a temp gun. And uh, within about five minutes, the heat from the cylinder heads would creep up this manifold and make it to my carburetor. And the temps were getting way too hot, uh, above 150, and that was lending itself to the gur a gurgling noise inside there, which was, a, for lack of a better word, boiling the fuel that was inside uh, the bowl of the carburetor. Not a good thing. The solution for me was these phenolic spacers. If you can see that brown uh, strip right there, that is a phenolic spacer. It absorbs a lot of the heat that is coming out of this intake manifold. So before that was there, the heat could travel easily to my carburetor, but now that phenolic spacer is acting like a heat dissipator or uh, a buffer, if you will. So now when I turn off my engine, I can shoot my temperature here on the intake manifold and I can shoot my temperature on my carbs and they're very much different. The carb remains a lot cooler than the very end point of this intake manifold and that's because this phenolic spacer is absorbing a lot of that heat for me and it brought the temps down of my carburetor to around 115, even after a very hot run. So I had no more gurgling or a boiling over of fuel in my carburetor bowl. That was a big win for me. And finally, number six. So this one for me is in theory, I don't think it was a problem on mine, but they say that your fuel itself can get too hot. So if you look at where your fuel lines go, you should probably be pretty particular about where you want to put them. And it's another reason to try and keep it for a bus, the inside of this uh, cabin as cool as possible. So uh, I was shooting my temps on the hose and uh, all around here, the temps were high. The fuel filter, the temps were high. But back there where the cooler air was, the temps remained low. So I've just tried to raise my fuel lines and get them away from the heat as best as I can. Uh, I put a cover on here, a cover on here that I riveted, and that's a cover that I put on also because those holes in the tin, especially at a stop, will allow heat from the street and from underneath your bus to travel up through any openings here, and they were right underneath my fuel line. So another thing was, uh, as a newer owner at the time, this seal here, it has two lips to it. This is the top one. I don't know if you can see it, but the other lip is supposed to go underneath the tin. On mine, both of these lips were on top of the tin, and there was a big gap here. So heat could also easily get through that and look what's right there, more my fuel lines. So that was another big win for me was when I properly applied this uh, seal right here, temperatures instantly went down inside here and all, and all around in this area. So number six, it's all about keeping this area cool because heat could be radiating up through any uh, weaknesses that you have in your tin or holes and heating up your fuel lines. I don't know if that was what was going on with mine, but I sure did appreciate getting the cooler temps after I plugged those holes and 
put this on right. So there you have it. Those are the six things that I encountered in my pursuit to fix my leaky carburetor. I hope you saw the one that it was for me, uh, but for you, it could be any one of those things uh, and others because I'm not an expert and I don't claim to be, but uh, this was the experience I had. So if I did or said anything wrong, uh, please feel free to comment so I know what you think. And if it did help you, please like and subscribe. But either way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.